Okay, guys, so I'm going to show you some more advanced things that you can do with your data. Okay, in this example, I have done three different trials, and I have already set up the equations to calculate the velocity for each of these trials. Okay, and this will allow me to do some pretty cool things. First, I can easily find the average of all my velocities. Okay. So I can find the average for that column, and I can drag it over. So now I have the average for that column there, and the average for that column there. Okay. Um, I could also find the average for all of the data points, all of the different velocities I have. Okay. And it would be 41.49 um, centimeters per second. Okay. You can also find the standard deviation. If you remember from math class, standard deviation is kind of how different the numbers are, um, how far away from each other they fall, and it's something we use along with the average. The formula for that is equals S T for standard deviation, standard dev, standard deviation. And it is the same. I'm just going to go ahead and find it for all my numbers. Okay, so it's 1.12. I'm going to go ahead and lessen the amount of decimals there so that it matches. So if I was reporting this on a lab report, I could say it is 48.14 plus or minus 1.12 centimeters per second. And that would give me a little bit of a better picture of all of the velocity data. Okay, I could also graph all three of my trials. So, in order to do this, I'd want to select, I'm just going to do, you know what, let's do some, I'm going to do the position versus time graph. And, again, we want to do a marked scatter, okay? That, again, they mixed it up, they put this as the x values and these as the y. We want it to be our time on this axis, so we're going to go select data for series 1. I'm going to go ahead and name it. It's going to be trial one. And my x values are going to be these times here. Oops, I didn't erase it all the way. And my y values are going to be the distances. Okay. Oh, trial one, not trial A. For series two, I'm going to call it trial two. My x values will be the times for trial 2, and my y values will be the times for trial A. Okay, and then series 3, trial 3. You can also enter it here. Sheet 1, I want it to be D2 to D6, and my y values are A2 to A6. So that's just another way you can do it. Okay. Now I have all my data there, and it looks pretty similar, okay? My points aren't all that different, which is great. I can go to chart layout, and I can add a trend line for trial one, okay? I can add a trend line for trial two. I could add a trend line for trial three. And guess what? They all look pretty similar, okay? I could do my options for the trial and make it so the intercept is zero and display the equation on the chart. That will give me my velocity. Well, look, it kind of matches these velocities over here. Falls within the range. Okay. So those are just some other options on how you can change the scale. You can change the number. Okay. Lower the number of decimals if you want to make it prettier. Okay, I could even, not the trend lines, I could even format the data. Okay, I could add error bars, which we don't really need to do. I can change the marker, okay, make it a square, change its size. I could change its color, um, all sorts of things. Okay, so those are some of my options.
Okay. So there's the position versus time graph. Okay. It is a little heavy in stuff. You probably want wouldn't want to do all of this on your data table. Okay. But I'm just showing you it so you can get an idea of some of your options. Okay. But that is just too much data on one graph. Okay. Let's go ahead and I can show you what the graph for the velocity versus time would look like. Okay. So I'm going to select my velocities and my different trials. Okay. We're going to see if we can do it for all three trials here. Okay. Scatter, marked scatter. Okay. And I'm ending up with something that looks like this. It said this is my x values and these are all my y values. And that is definitely not what we want. So we're going to go select data for series one, trial one. My x values should be the times. Okay. So that is these ones right here. And my y value should be the velocities that go along with that. Okay. Then I will have trial two. X values are my times for trial two. The y values are my velocities for trial two. And then we have trial three. The x values are my times for trial three. And the y values are my velocities for trial three. Okay. Oh, and then this thing is still being weird. I want to actually delete that one. So let me go ahead and do that. Series four, remove it. Don't need that one. Okay. And also, I know that this is a constant velocity, so it should be pretty much a straight line. This right now goes from 46.5 to 50. I want to change that. So I'm going to format the axis and give it a bigger range. I'm going to make my minimum zero and my maximum 60. Okay. And that gives me more of the line that I am looking for um, in my different trials. Okay. If I added a trend line to this, I would expect it to be pretty flat. Okay. Let's go ahead and do it for all of them. And you can see they're all pretty flat. Yeah, it's going down a little bit, but overall it's pretty flat, which shows our constant velocity. Okay. And of course, before I would put it on the thing, I would want to add all of my axis labels. Okay. This one is a, oops, velocity versus time. On my x-axis is my time, on my y-axis is my velocity in centimeters per second. We always want to include units on our axes. Okay. But there's some of the more advanced stuff that you can do in Excel. Um, if you need help on any of this, let me know. Um, there's also even more options and more great videos out there on YouTube. Um, but hopefully that'll help you with your lab reports.